Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician. On this video, we're gonna take a look at probability, and more specifically, we're gonna look at a problem where we can map out all the possible outcomes with an area model. An area model is just a way for us to see the outcomes, and then we'll be able to answer any questions that might come up. So let's look at our situation that we have here. We have Marcus has three pairs of pants, black, blue, and green, and four shirts, black, red, orange, and blue. And first, before we even attack any problem here, we wanna map out the sample space. Remember, the sample space is just listing out all the possible combinations we have from these two different options. He has his pairs of pants, and he has his shirts. We wanna see what are the possible combinations he can make. So, for an area model, I'm gonna need that rectangle over there. And I need to first set up the sides to showcase my two options. Now the first thing he might pick are a pair of pants. So I'm going to label the top there those three colors for his pair of pants. He can either use blue, I mean black, he can then use blue, or he might pick green. And notice that it doesn't say he's more likely to pick one color over the other, so they're all equally likely to happen. Because of that reason then, I know that the fraction for every possible pair of pants here is going to be one third because he has a one in three chance of choosing that pair of pants. Now I'm gonna go ahead and draw in my columns here just so I can now see that the left column is about the black pants, the middle is the blue, and the right is the green. We're gonna do the same thing now on the left side of that rectangle to set up the four shirts. Again, labeling the side with all my different color combinations. I can either pick black or I can pick red. The next color is green, not green, it is orange. And finally, the last one is blue. Again, he is not more likely to pick one color over the other, which means they all have an equal chance of being picked. So since there's four different shirts, that means he has a one in four chance of picking that shirt. So every fraction for this is going to be one fourth going all the way down and then I'm gonna draw in the horizontal lines showcasing my sample space. Notice that in that sample space, I have 12 different boxes in my area model. Each box there represents a combination of a pair of pants and a shirt. So for this problem here, Marcus has 12 different outcomes that he could pick. And for an area model, what we wanna do now is we want to multiply the fractions on the sides of each of these little rectangles to see what the probability is. Now this is a very nice, simple problem for us because all the fractions are the same. And that means for every box here, we will be multiplying one third by one fourth. And one third times one fourth means we're gonna end up with one twelfth. That is going to be the fraction that goes into every rectangle here which means every combination he has for his pair of pants and his shirts are going to be a one in 12 chance. But now that we have this mapped out, it's gonna help us solve the problem a little more easier. Again, this is a simple problem. So the fractions all end up being the same. But just imagine if these fractions were different, then all of these numbers inside the rectangle would have different values. They wouldn't all be one out of 12 because it just depends on the two fractions you're multiplying. Now let's say for this problem, I wanted to know what's the probability that Marcus is going to wear the color blue. What I want to do now is that now that I have that area model all mapped out, I just want to locate the boxes there that represent him wearing blue. So I'm gonna get my highlighter, and actually I'll use the blue highlighter for this. I wanna highlight every single box where he might be wearing blue. Well, look at my blue shirt column here. I mean, my blue pant column here. I know that each of these 112s is representing Marcus wearing blue pants. The same thing is gonna be with that bottom row. That bottom row there represents when Marcus is wearing a blue shirt. So notice that out of all the 12 possible combinations, we have one, two, three, four, five, six different ways for Marcus to be wearing blue in his outfit. Since we have six of those and they all happen to be 1 12th, I could write it out this way where I have 1 12th plus 1 12th, 
I would have to do this six times. But I think we can figure out that if I have six 112s, the answer for this is going to be six out of 12, which happens to reduce to one half. So what's the chance of Marcus wearing blue? Well, he has a one in two chance of wearing something blue or 50%. Let's see if we can do one more problem with this. Let's see if I wanted to know what's the probability that he's going to wear, uh, let's see, what color could we pick? Let's see, what's the probability that he's going to wear the color orange? So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in there. I wanted that to be orange, not green. <laughs> and again, now I'm gonna look for all the boxes in there that represent Marcus wearing orange. So I get my highlighter out and I'm looking for what boxes is he gonna wear orange? Well, I think this is the orange shirt section. That's his row there for orange shirts. And notice that he's going to have three different uh, outcomes, three different possibilities for wearing that orange shirt, which means that his fraction is going to be three over 12, which reduces to one fourth. So there you go. The area model helps you map out all the possible different combinations that you might have. It doesn't solve the problem for you, but it shows you all the outcomes so that when you get a question, such as what's the probability of him wearing blue or what's the probability of him wearing orange. You just look at that area model and pull out the information that you want. It's that math magician and I'll see you on the next video.